but he was bold because of his confidence in the Lord. And he was persuaded and convinced that God would use him to bless whatever body of believers he spent time with. And he expected to be blessed in turn, right? He wrote to Timothy what he knew from the Word and the evidence of his own life. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, the King James says fear, right? But of power and love and discipline, or boldness. 2 Timothy 1.7 So he had this boldness in his own life. And it's not, that has nothing to do with pride. No. Quite the contrary. It had everything to do with humility. His, his confidence wasn't self-confidence. It was confidence in the Lord. Go back and read Romans 8. Or go back and listen to the studies that we did in Romans chapter 8 if, if you want to find that out. I mean, because that's where his power came from. I mean, Paul was a man who literally, his life changed the world that he lived in. Yes, it did. He turned cities upside down. And that's what he said, because he was persuaded that nothing could separate him from the love of God. His confidence was totally complete, but his confidence was in the Lord. And he knew that the Lord who had called him to the task would use his submitted life to bring blessings into other people's lives. It's the Word, right? That's why I was just reading from, from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for, this, for the common good. Saying the same thing, right? You ought to have an absolute assurance that God can use you, what He has put in you, starting with His love and His Holy Spirit, to be a blessing to other people. This is where, the, this is where ministry comes from. It comes from a heart that has a desire to bless others, to serve, to serve others. Don't you think a lot of people think when they hear ministry that it's always preaching the Word? Well, that's, that's part of the problem. Yes is yes, they think of ministry. And listen, this is something that the organized church has cultivated, mm -hmm. that, that there are special people who get called to ministry. No, every Christian is called to ministry. Some ministries are more visible than others, mm -hmm. like the preachers who stand behind the pulpit. That, and that's fine. But everybody has a ministry. And none is special. God's no respecter of persons. So if you get this idea that, you know, because you don't stand behind a pulpit, you don't have a ministry. Or because you know lots of people don't watch what you do, that your ministry is not important. You've been misled. You've been misguided, and and therein lies the rub, because we are guided. We're supposed to be guided by the word. That's why we do these Bible studies, so we get guided by the word and not the tradition or the training of the church, which can be an error. You know, I think Christians would have a, a, a whole different attitude if they would. Continue to remember that in the workplace, whenever they, wherever they go, and they're in the workplace, that becomes an embassy. Their ministry. And it's an embassy Absol absolutely. for Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if you have to use, a, like Mark works in a, in a plant, right? I, mm -hmm. I, you don't have to wear steel toe work shoes or anything, right? No, no but we're getting ID cards. Do you have to, can, are you allowed to go in barefoot? No. Oh. Well, it's just a thought, because, you know, when God said to Moses, take off your sandals, for the ground you stand on is holy. Wherever, what makes something holy? The presence of God, right? And it's like, you know, when you go into, so I'm not necessarily suggesting in the, in the natural that you take off your shoes, but you should have a mindset that when you, wherever you are, is holy ground. Because you bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You bring the presence of God. You bring that holiness with you yes. into that place. And that is your ministry. Regardless of what you do, if you're doing it as unto the Lord, and you're doing what God has called you to do. And your co-workers are watching. Everybody's watching all the time. That's the truth, all right? That's right. So you have the power to be a blessing. Amen. Because you, it says, you know, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, it says, we have this treasure in earth and vessels. Yes. You have a treasure. The love of God has been poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit. The Word of God has been written on you. You have the power because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I hope you have the power of the Holy Spirit. You should be walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, well, that's another topic, but you know, th think about that. You can't be saved without having the Holy Spirit. 
You can be saved and not be walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you feel like you are, you need to seek God and pray for that, for that baptism, that moving, that power of the Holy Spirit activated, be activated in your life, all right?